It's Halloween, everybody. Today is the last day you will see me wearing this hat for another year. Anyway, what is up, you guys? I'm Charmix today. I'm going to be reacting to Monsters You Didn't Know Were Under Your Bed by The Odd Ones Out. I freaking love The Odd Ones Out. I love James and his animations. And speaking of monsters under my bed, like, I know a lot of kids have that fear when they're younger. I don't think I really ever did have that fear, except for one time. For some reason, I think, like, one time I thought there was something under my bed. But normally, as a kid, I would actually hide under the bed and try to, like, scare people and stuff, because I was, like, really small, so I could get under the bed. So, yeah, I wasn't really afraid, because I was under- I was a monster under the bed! Anyway, with that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you guys go subscribe to The Odd Ones Out. Without any further ado, let's begin! Boys and girls, come hear my greeting. I hope you don't plan on sleeping. Tonight, for while you are dreaming, evil awakes, unearthed and creeping. There oh, that's a nice little, uh, nice little poem there, James. There's things that thump, things that bite, things that go bump in the night. What are these things you Aww. sit and ponder? Brace yourselves. We call them monsters. <laughs> that was a real monster right there. What? He's gonna tell us about monsters, but they're not gonna be that scary. Silence, you dirty apparition! Don't you see the danger you are in? For what I speak is 100% real. Don't believe me? Just ask my pet eel. This guy's nuts. What? <laughs> I'm not an apparition, I'm a ghoul. The first monster- That is not a ghoul, that's a ghost. That's not a ghoul. Oh wait, are they the same thing? Maybe there is a ghoul. I don't know, I'm playing uh, Fallout New Vegas right now. I know I'm a little bit late. But uh, yeah, ghouls aren't ghouls aren't ghosts, so I was... Alright, what the frig is a ghoul? Let me look this up. Okay, so I just looked it up. A ghoul is an evil spirit or phantom that supposedly robs graves and eats bodies from it, basically. Did not know that. What we'll see today is something that... Uh... Likes to eat hay. First they champ, then they stamp, then... Okay, I can't speak in rhymes for the whole thing. I have a question for you guys. Are you familiar with the term furry? What? Oh, the middle one? Well, after doing <laughs> research on these monsters, I don't think furry is a new concept. Humans, for whatever reason, have always been obsessed with personifying animals. And who can blame them? <laughs> look how cute- Yeah, look at Angel's Ghost Boat the- oh, I can't speak. A Angel's Ghost Boat the- a Angel's Ghost Boat the- I can't speak. If you look at ancient Egypt, they wore, you know, animal stuff. Cute these guys are. Now, a lot of these monsters follow a similar pattern. So if you ever wanted to Frankenstein up a monster, all you have to do is take two already existing animals, one of them being preferably a human, and then you just gotta put them together. Oh my goodness. You all know about <laughs> mermaids. One part sexy, the other half is just some lady. Well, do you know about this even <laughs> scarier combination? It's called a hippo campus. Half hippo? Half college. They say after four stressful years, he accumulates a hundred thousand. Hippocampus. Yo, that's weird, but still not as weird as my wife taking the kids and leaving me. Thousand dollars of debt, and no one in his field is hiring. <laughs> oh, I and the ones that are want you to have experience. I'm just messing with you guys. Okay, but for real, a hippocampus is a half fish, half horse. Oh, like the Neopet. What? Yeah, a uh, Fiopian. I had one when I was like two. I used my Christmas paintbrush on it. You guys aren't scared of a <laughs> literal seahorse? Oh, that's right. We're supposed to be talking about monsters under your bed or something. So is he just naming different monsters basically and describing them? Is that what's going on here, James? Also, I love the uh, the animation in this. I don't know. The quality seems better. I don't know if I'd say it's much better than the last one, but it seems to be a little bit better. Maybe it's just that every video that James does, he progresses in one way. And the quality seems to be a bit better. That would, that would explain it. Well, how does it kill people? Like, like, can it turn them into stone? Uh, no. But the Scandinavians have a version called the Kelpie that tricks humans into riding them, and then it drowns the humans. Probably should have started with that one. That's... okay, I guess. All right, Edward. If a murderous horse doesn't put you on edge, then how about this? A monopod. Yeah, that's right, it looks just like a regular person, but it only has one leg. That's a thing? Whoa, are you calling amputees monsters? <laughs> no, this amputee <laughs> has one giant leg. And by the way, these guys date back all the way to 400 BC, way before the first amputee ever existed. 
Also, despite- That's- wait, so that's a- that's a thing? A monopod? A monster with one foot? Why would they think that's, like, a, a scary thing? Just- it's, it's, like, a normal person, but with one foot. That just sounds like as someone with a birth defect. Despite them only having one leg, they're supposedly very fast, so imagine this guy aggressively chasing you at midnight. That's creepy. It's your pants, too. What about this? A blemmy. Again, looks like a regular person, but oh wait, where's its head? I don't see it anywhere. Oh, it's on its chest, like some kind of Pokemon. <laughs> Come on, does this not terrify you? How would you give this guy a hug without suffocating him? Hug him from behind. Well, that could get a bit awkward, actually. Never mind. My dad doesn't have a head. Also, he rides a horse, so this is all a pretty normal Tuesday for me. All right, it's fine that you're not scared because I've been saving the best monsters for last. Are we gonna get into actual scary ones now? I don't know, I think it would actually ruin the tone of the video if you were to actually get into some actual, like, scary ones. Everyone, meet the Serpopherd. It has the body of a lion, the head of a lion, but the So it's a lion? Neck of a snake. Ugh, it's so gross, why- Oh, it's cute. Why would anything need that long <laughs> of a neck? So it can talk to giraffes? Imagine if it could- Yeah, this would be the giraffe's friend. Giraffes don't have friends because their their heads are so high, they can't hear what the people down there are saying. But this would be the only friend a giraffe could have. Retract its neck, and then you just think it's a normal old lion and say, Hey, that's pretty scary, but at least it's 20 feet away from me. And then its head would just extend out of its body and then bite your head off. Speaking of snake-based creatures, what is the second most mischievous animal? Well, I don't know if I'd consider myself an animal, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty nosy. <laughs> I always like to know what my family is doing. I guess since I have no- legit no social life, I kind of live vicariously through other people. So I always like to know what everyone's doing, but I don't know if I consider myself that much of an animal. Answer, the snake. Snakes represent Slytherin from Harry Potter, and those guys are always up to something. And snakes were responsible for the fall of man. But do you know what the number one most mischievous animal is? Answer, the fox. He's been in a ton of fables. He's a master- That's true. So the fox and the snake are two of the most mischievous animals. What about cats? You know the saying, curiosity killed the cat, right? But what if they had a baby together? Well, take a look at this Aww. monster from Chile called the... The... I can't say it. The Jirafulu, there we go. It's a half fox, half snake. And it has a claw for a tail, and it also creates. That's adorable. That's adorable. How, James? You're making these aren't scary. You're making them adorable. It's whirlpools to drown people. Now this would be a what? really cool monster if it wasn't so terrifying. You know what? I got even more snake-based monsters to show you. Take a look. You see, I actually think snakes are cute though. Because I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I hate snakes, but I like spiders, or I like spiders, but I hate snakes. I'm the one that's like, I like spiders, or no, no way, I hate spiders. I'm, I'm the one that's. I like snakes. I think they're kind of cute. Definitely think they're little heads and they go like Yoshi. So that's kind of cute. I'm more comfortable around snakes than spiders because spiders, they freak me out. I hate spiders so much. They got little, their little fingers that are all hairy and they're like, it's, oh, I hate spiders. I hate spiders. I hate them. Look at the Amphisbina. 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 That's it, right? It's a half snake, half snake, but the same half. It's a snake with two heads on both ends for double biting action. I would hate to be the head that has the responsibility of uh, waste disposal. I think it would be cool if there was a creature that was the snake's tail on both sides. That'd be so useless. Oh wait, that's just an <laughs> oversized worm. How would either one of them poop? Great question. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'd hate to be the head that has to, you know, get out the uh, waste. Question. I honestly don't know how a real snake poops. And the last snake yeah, I don't, actually, I think for w real snakes, I think there's like a hole around their tail, like a really tiny hole. Base monster I'm going to show you is called the Chelolita longicollis. That's its wow. Latin name. James pronounced it wrong. Oh, uh, well. Its real name is the snake neck turtle. It's a lot like the serpopard with its long neck, but instead a turtle. But I doubt you'll have to worry about these things. Why are half of these, like, monsters just normal creatures with long necks? <laughs> when these were originally thought of. Was that like the definition of horror, having like a long neck? There's no way these abominations can be real. No, those are real. Huh? They're indigenous to Australia. I saw one at the zoo with my dad. 
There's no way these things can be real. No, they're definitely real. But do you know what isn't real? All of us. None of us are real, James. Why do you think we all have the same voice? You're talking to yourself again. Uh It's been three weeks. The fourth wall breach. Fourth wall breach. Since the accident. You need to snap out of it. (laughs) What are you guys talking about? You're totally real. So, did I scare you? Huh? You guys scared? Hey, you! Knock it off in there. (laughs) I love that editing. That was awesome. That was awesome. Were you telling the truth with the animals with long necks? Do they actually exist? Because I'm interested to find out if, uh, you know, the long neck turtle exists. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I don't really know what this had to do with the monsters under my bed. Because basically James was just trying to scare little kids with stories of animals with long necks. (laughs) That just seemed like... Uh, but yeah, I, I, I freaking love this. I freaking love this. It, it was really well done, and, um, like, the animation style it seems to be increasing. Like, every The Odd Ones Out video, the quality of them gets better and better. And I don't know how you can keep doing that, because, you know, eventually you're gonna end up like JonTron and not make a video for a year while working on, apparently, like, one video or something. I don't know. But anyway, I hope you guys liked this, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, possibly share it with a friend. If you do it, subscribe to your family. Also, make sure you guys go subscribe to the Odd Out, and I'll see you guys next time. Boop!